Hello and welcome to Buffy and the Art of Story Season 6, a Buffy the Vampire Slayer rewatch podcast that usually focuses on one episode at a time. This month, though the podcast is on a holiday break all the same, I wanted to share some Buffy during the month of December. So I am releasing what was originally a bonus episode for patrons of the podcast. It is called A Very Buffy Holiday. I am Lisa M. Lily, novelist, story expert, and founder of writingasasecondcareer.com. In this bonus episode, I compare the six Buffy holiday episodes plus one holiday flashback. It was originally recorded in 2021, so you'll hear me say there are some spoilers in it. The episode, though, doesn't contain any spoilers beyond where we currently are in the podcast, which is nearly at the end of season six. If you are a patron, you can find all the bonus episodes at patreon.com slash Lisa M. Lily. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash L-I-S-A M is in Marie L-I-L-L-Y and look for the tab that says bonus collection. Okay, let's dive into the Hellmouth, this time during the holidays. Hello and welcome to a holiday bonus episode for patrons of Buffy and the Art of Story. Since you're listening, you already know I am Lisa M. Lilly, and today's episode I'm calling A Very Buffy Holiday. I'm recording this on December 23, 2021, and I know the news these days is not great, but I hope whatever holiday you celebrate that you are finding a way or you did find a way to enjoy it. And also, if I missed responding to any of your comments, on social media. I apologize. I took a break, as you know, for a few weeks. And it's the first time in, I want to say, 20 some years that I really took the time off and and did not work. I didn't do any law work. I didn't write any novels. um, And I pretty much avoided social media or email um, other than occasionally For this holiday episode, first off, there are some spoilers because some of the holiday episodes are in later season. So if you don't want to hear those, you might want to skip ahead when I mention the episode names. Buffy had six holiday episodes. There were three Halloween episodes, Halloween in season one, Fear Itself in season four, and All the Way season six. Then there was one Valentine's Day episode, Bewitched, Bothered, and Bewildered in season two, and one Thanksgiving episode, Pangs in season season four, and then one Christmas episode, Amends, in season three. In picking out or isolating those episodes, I did cheat a little. I searched on Google and I found a really fun movie phone definitive ranking of every Buffy the Vampire Slayer holiday episode. I'll try to remember to put a link to that on Patreon. You can find it at movie phone, that's F-O-N-E dot com slash news slash definitive ranking of every Buffy the Vampire Slayer holiday episode with a hyphen between each of those. Those words. So here is how Movie Phone ranked the episodes starting from least favorite to most favorite. Six was All the Way, five was Amends, four Bewitched, three Halloween, two Pangs, and one Fear Itself. My list is a little bit different and if you're so inclined I would love to see yours either in a Patreon message or post or on social media. I do agree with Movie Phone in one respect. I would put All the Way, the season six Halloween episode, as the least favorite of the holiday episodes, so number six, which is not to say it's a bad episode, but it isn't that holiday-like to me. 
Dawn sneaks out on Halloween to meet her friend Janice. The big reveal, uh, I haven't broken this down yet since it's season six, so I haven't really looked at the plot points. But as best as I remember, about a quarter way through or a third of the way through, we find out that the two boys, Dawn and Janice, meet are vampires. Although Dawn and Janice don't find that out till much later. So I told you spoilers. So part of why in general I don't love the episode is I really want to feel sympathy for Dawn and I do feel some at the very end. She's never kissed a boy before. She really likes, I think his name is Justin, and it's devastating when she learns first that he's a vampire and second that maybe why he thought she was special is her sister's the Slayer. And yet, despite that feeling for her there, I didn't overall have a ton of sympathy for her, but that I will get to, I'm sure, when I break it down in season six. Right now, seeing it purely from a holiday perspective, the reason it's not my favorite is that the story really doesn't need to be on Halloween at all. There are two things that rely on Halloween. One is this plot with a creepy old man, but that plot goes nowhere. It does lead to the reveal of the two vampires, the two boys being vampires, but that could have been revealed in any number of ways. We didn't need to see them attack this old guy, and his storyline is a complete mislead. He has these spooky-looking toys, and for some reason he carves brownies with a giant carving knife, but it it doesn't go anywhere other than that than to sort of say, haha, you were wrong about the old man. The other part that relies a little bit on it being Halloween is the episode starts out in the magic shop. It is so super busy. Giles is overwhelmed. Everyone is helping. But Anya absolutely loves it. And I think this is the one where she does her money dance at the cash register. I can't I can't remember for sure. But anyway, uh, Xander is watching her. And finally, though he has been resisting for the entire season up to that point, he finally announces to everyone their engagement. And that leads to an impromptu engagement party where Tara and Willow argue a bit about Willow using magic immediately to create the decorations. And then later, Tara and Willow have a very large fight when Willow is about to do a dangerous spell to try to find Dawn, who Buffy finds out has run off is not sleeping over at Janice's and is missing so you sort of need Halloween to prompt the engagement announcement it does kind of prompt that fight but again that those things really could come out of anything else so it doesn't need to be a Halloween episode it doesn't need to be set on Halloween uh, it's sort of fun that it is I mean there are some great costumes I there are some great lines about the costumes but it's why it doesn't really hit me as a Halloween episode. My number five is Fear Itself. So this is the biggest difference between me and Movie Phone, which puts Fear Itself at number one. And maybe I'm influenced by uh, the other flaws, or maybe not flaws, but things that didn't quite work for me in Fear Itself, which I already talked about on the podcast episode about it. So I'll try to focus on the holiday aspect of it. And in that sense, I do like fear itself in a lot of ways. What is more Halloween than a haunted house? So it took me a bit to figure out, well, why don't I rank this as a really top holiday episode? I mean, that is so Halloween-like. And it is all about the characters dealing with their greatest fears. And I think it comes down to I wanted it to either have more of the sort of scary humor like we get in the episode entitled Halloween or I wanted to I wanted it to be genuinely scary. So the horror genre is marked by fear being the primary emotion and don't recall if I got to this when I broke down the episode's plot points and character development, but as I thought about it for this, I realized the primary emotion that I remember the characters expressing really was more annoyance than fear. Buffy was annoyed in the haunted house when she thought Xander took off alone, and she was annoyed when Willow started arguing with her about how, well, Buffy's not the boss just because he's 
she's she's the slayer. And when Buffy pointed out that Willow's spells are about 50-50, um, mainly Buffy was annoyed. Later, she is sad and feels isolated. But I didn't feel a lot of genuine terror from her. Willow is annoyed when she feels her friends doubt her magic abilities. Yes, later she does become frightened when her spell goes awry, but most of the time she's annoyed. And Sander is annoyed that no one listens to him or notices him. He doesn't realize he has, from their perspective, disappeared. They literally cannot hear him. So in that sense, there's a nice metaphorical link between the scary things that happen and the character's emotions. But mostly he's annoyed and, again, sad and feeling left out more so than feeling fear. Oz is really the only character who feels genuine terror, terror of turning into the wolf, not being able to control it, of hurting others. So that's why this doesn't top my list of holiday or Halloween episodes. Uh, One caveat on that, this is in retrospect. I haven't, in fact, this is for all of these. I have not rewatched them specifically to talk about this, but I'm, I'm pretty sure if I went back and watched, that is what I would find. I would love to hear your thoughts on it. So number four for me, and Movie Phone had it at number five, so we're pretty well aligned, is Immense. That was the season three Christmas episode where Angel uh, is driven to the point where he is willing to kill himself by standing out waiting for the sunrise because of these sort of, uh, they aren't called ghosts of angels past, but more or less that's what they are, though we find out it's the first that is doing all of this to manipulate him. Here is why I think I like Men's better as a holiday or Christmas episode than I thought I would when I really considered it. One, we've got the homage to A Christmas Carol, so very holiday-like, and the flashbacks, some are too Christmas. We see Buffy shopping for Christmas and Sunnydale decorated. There's that wonderful moment when Joyce and Faith step outside at night in wonder at the snowfall, or I guess it's an early morning. And it's it's this beautiful moment between them and for Faith, because we've seen her so troubled uh, and frustrated and angry throughout much of season three. And here she gets this lovely kind of magical moment. Also that Faith goes to Buffy's house on Christmas Eve after claiming she had a party to go to. And she is being vulnerable with Buffy and Joyce, admitting that she didn't have somewhere to go. She brings gifts. She tells Joyce they're crappy, but she brings gifts. And we see this possibility that Faith will be more a part of uh, the Scooby gang, maybe, and Buffy and Joyce's life, which came at Joyce's prompting. So I also like that Buffy is genuinely glad that Faith accepted her invitation, even though at first she resisted Joyce pushing her to invite Faith. Both Buffy and Faith have made some progress here. And then, of course, the episode ends with a sort of Christmas miracle because Angel doesn't make a different choice. He doesn't choose to save his own life. He doesn't decide that it is better to stay and fight and, uh, I guess, seek redemption rather than removing himself from the world. That choice is taken from him, at least for that day, by the sun never shining that day. There's too much cloud cover and there is snow in California. In Sunnydale, it blankets the town. All of that together makes me like this as a holiday episode, as a Christmas episode. I also found when I was looking around a Joss Whedon quote uh, from the bronze, which was that internet forum at the time the show was airing where fans would comment. And according to this essay I read uh, from Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Philosophy, Fear and Trembling in Sunnydale, which is edited by James B. South, there's an episode in it, Prophecy Girl and the Powers That Be, The Philosophy of Religion in the Buffy Verse by Wendy Love Anderson. And she said that on the bronze, the fans were very confused by the message of amends. Apparently, there was on the theater marquee at 
toward the end of the episode when there is all the snow falling it said pray and the fans were questioning is the show sending a more sort of christian message is it affirming a belief in god they felt confused because much of the rest of the show i think it's fair to say undermines certain christian beliefs early in the uh, series i want to say in the harvest Giles says, contrary to popular mythology, this world did not start as Eden. So just the fact that he calls it popular mythology cues you to how the show sees traditional religion or perhaps any religion. And so the fans were confused and um, the bronze, Whedon said, uh, as to who made this decision in amends, who saved Angel. Was it God? Well, I'm an atheist, but it's hard to ignore the idea of a Christmas miracle here. That was on page 213 of the book, if you want to read the essay, which I found very interesting. All of that is why I do think this is a pretty strong Christmas episode. Number three on my list is Pangs, the season four Thanksgiving episode, and Movie Phone had it at two, so we're pretty well aligned there as well. Unlike all the way, Pangs is very focused on the holiday. It is all about Thanksgiving. It aims to explore the origins of the holiday, the ongoing traditions, whether we should keep them or not. Uh, as a country, what sort of responsibility our country as a whole has to the indigenous peoples that it plagued and destroyed and fought. And it examines different viewpoints and perspectives about that and about Thanksgiving. When I did the breakdown for the podcast, I had some trouble with there being no real resolution to those questions. But um, one of you, I think it was Raven Dark author, if it was someone else, I apologize, suggested that maybe that was the whole point, that there there isn't a black and white answer to those questions. And I agree. And I think that I sort of missed that when I was breaking down the episode. Also, I thought as a holiday episode, it did a good job of playing on the stresses of holidays. Buffy is trying to have this perfect Thanksgiving and how striving to make it just right can create so much more stress. And also how that often happens because it is a substitute for other tensions. In Buffy's case, she's anxious about other things in her life and it comes out in her obsession with creating this perfect, picture-perfect dinner. It's something that she feels she can control when there are other things in her life that feel out of control or that she doesn't know what to do about. And I identify with the stress of creating the holiday meal because both my mother and one of my sisters-in-law were very much like this. And much as I love the holidays, uh, it could be quite dangerous to hang around their kitchens during preparation. And to some extent, I, I feel like I've absorbed that. It's really hard for me to relax when I'm preparing holiday dinner and I have this thing of, nope, this should be just right. And if you're gonna help me, don't do it this way. Uh, do it that way and I think oh my god I have become my mother that is is not all bad mom had many good qualities I do try to relax a little more than she did for the holidays partly by doing less uh, intense sorts of dinners I'm really good at appetizers and drinks Going back to the holiday episode, I also like that Pangs features the unexpected guests. First Spike, who Buffy knows about, but also Angel, who lurks, and she only finds out about him at the end. So overall, I feel like Pangs was a pretty solid holiday episode for Buffy. My number two differs from Movie Phone because I have that as Bewitched, Bothered, and Bewildered, the Valentine's episode, and Movie Phone had that at four. We're not seeing it either as the best or the least favorite, but we have it at other ends of the spectrum. And I guess for most people, Pangs probably probably would be higher on the holiday list. It is a more nuanced episode. It explores some interesting themes. But when it comes to re-watching, if you ask me right now what holiday episode would I re-watch, Pangs or Bewitched, Bothered and Bewildered, it would be Bewitched. I think it's because more of the humor lands for me. 
Also, it so perfectly captures the challenge of Valentine's Day. Buffy tells Amy uh, when asked if she's celebrating, says something about, oh, it's just a made-up holiday about selling flowers and chocolate. And Amy correctly deduces that Buffy had a very bad breakup. But that is the thing of Valentine's Day. One, it is about selling flowers and chocolate, both of which, at least in the Chicago area where I live, tend to almost double in price for Valentine's Day. Also, the flowers you get are not nearly as nice as other times in the year because there is such a demand for them. And side note, if you want to try out a new restaurant, don't do it on Valentine's Day. One of my friends, we like to go out on Valentine's Day for the fun of it, but we are always sorry when we try a restaurant that is high on our list to check out or is a favorite because the Valentine's menus are limited, they're usually not as good, and they rush you through because it's so busy. So there is a strong commercial aspect to it that also you don't get kind of the best stuff. And at the same time, if you don't have someone to celebrate it with and to do all those things with, it can feel really bad. When I was younger, it truly felt to me like a holiday design just to make me feel bad if I wasn't involved with someone or wasn't happy in my relationship, which is how both how it is for both Buffy and Xander. This was such a strong feeling for me that one of my ex-boyfriends, my favorite ex-boyfriend, don't tell him, uh, one year he called me up and said, hey, why don't we send each other flowers at work? Because neither of us were seeing anyone. We were both feeling kind of blue. And so we did that, which turned out to be pretty fun. And he sent me a really nice arrangement. Also, there's the Valentine's Day breakup aspect. Xander obsesses over getting the right Valentine's gift, that sort of uh, commercial aspect, but also that pressure aspect of it. He gives it to Cordelia. She loves it, and she breaks up with him. And I feel like that is also a pretty typical Valentine's Day thing. There is a lot of stress on it. And I I think it does cause people to really think about, is this the relationship I want to be in, which leads to pre-Valentine's breakups, which makes it that much worse of a holiday. Going back to the episode, I also love it because we get to see Joyce come on to Xander. And I think the actress had a lot of fun with that. And we see Cordelia get mad about it, which is also very fun. And at the end, Cordelia admits to her friends that she is seeing Xander and stands up to them, which seems like a wonderful Valentine's message if we want to see it as a real holiday to celebrate romance and love. All of that is why I do love Bewitched, Bothered, and Bewildered as a Valentine's Day or holiday episode, despite that it has its flaws, which I talked about in uh, the breakdown of it. And finally, my number one is the episode Halloween. So Movie, movie Phone had it at three. This is my favorite because I find it the most fun. I just love everyone turning into their costumes. You really need it to be on Halloween for that. Oh, except Cordelia, who does not turn into a big cat. I also love that each of them learns or gains something by that experience. Willow feels freer to embrace her sexuality, to uh, sort of embody herself because of it. Buffy discovers the joy of being a slayer and that she wouldn't want to be that woman in the corsets with the big skirts and living in that culture despite that she imagines that's what Angel wants and she and Angel have an honest conversation about that. Xander gains some confidence by being turned into a soldier. I feel like it frees him from a lot of his self-doubts and a lot of the messages that he has been getting from his family. So it is overall positive for him. Also, it's all set off by Ethan Rain, who is a great villain who returns again and again, and he's worshiping chaos, which fits the uh, Halloween theme, and he, he does it by running a costume shop. And then we get Giles' dark side, which 
also fits the Halloween holiday. The idea of, no, Giles doesn't wear a costume, but in a way, uh, a sort of part of a mask, you could argue, that Giles wears of that stuffy librarian shifts a little and we see that dark side underneath. So it is a very Halloween-like episode for all those reasons, and that's why it gets my award for Best Buffy Holiday episode. Finally, an honorable mention goes to the holiday flashback in the body. Buffy remembers a previous Christmas with her mom and Giles and all her friends, and it's a Christmas I would have loved to attend. Anya explains that there is a real Santa Claus, but he doesn't so much bring toys to children as eviscerate them. Joyce and Giles have great chemistry in the kitchen. They're very playful, Uh, and then Buffy teases them about having to watch them in case they have sex again. She doesn't literally say the words have sex, but that's the implication. It's very fun, and it seems like they all had a wonderful time. I felt sad that we didn't get to see all of it, and of course it's devastating in the context of the episode, The Body. And that flashback is probably my favorite Buffy holiday. So that's it for the very Buffy holiday bonus episode. If you want to see something fun on Instagram, remember in season five, Buffy and Willow are joking about tiny Jewish Santa when Willow brings Buffy the gift of homework in the hospital when she's there with Joyce. So I happen to see a Christmas decoration that is called a Jewish Santa. It's from a shop called Mary Mary in Chicago. So I took a picture of it. You can see that on Instagram. Big surprise on Instagram. I am at Lisa M. Lily, L-I-S-A, M as in Marie, L-I-L-L-Y. Thank you to all of you for being part of this podcasting and Buffy journey with me and especially for supporting the podcast on Patreon, particularly through these uh, years, the COVID lockdowns and the uncertainty. It has just meant so much to me to be able to share that with you and to have your support. I wish you happiness with whatever holiday you celebrate or don't and a peaceful end of the year and a very, very happy new year. And this is Lisa from Present Day 2023 back again to thank you once more for listening to this bonus episode and to the podcast this year. I wish you a very happy December 2023 and a happy new year. If you'd like to share your thoughts on the Buffy holiday episodes, how you rank them, what your favorite and least favorite is and why, I would so love to hear it. You can comment on Patreon, even if you are not a member, or you can email me at buffystorypod at gmail.com. If you'd like to join Patreon and get access to the bonus episodes, you can do that for as little as a dollar a month, though at the $5 level, you'll also get access to all my How to Plot Your Novel from Idea to First Draft course modules as well. Go to patreon.com slash Lisa M. Lilly. Thanks again for listening and come back on New Year's Day for one more bonus episode before we return to season six in January. This bonus is from the Angel Retrospective podcast, Wolfram and Cast. Host Stephen Yunkin will talk about Angel Season 1, Episode 21, Blind Date, where Angel teams up with a member of evil law firm Wolfram and Hart to try to stop a blind assassin. 